Everyone said? Amen. 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 I was going to talk to you about Nehemiah, and I may just do that, but the Lord redirected me to Ezekiel this morning. How many of you have a mouth in here? I'm not saying profane, I'm just saying have a mouth in here. <laughs> Amen? How many of you use it for the right thing? How many of you use it for the right thing? Because we've got to understand, and, and, and I'm, I'm, as, I'm, as I'm praising the worship, the Lord is saying, wow, are you off on this <clears throat> in your own life? Life and death are in the power of the what? Tongue. Of the tongue. Your life is the way it is right now because of what you prophesy into it. How many know that when you open your mouth, it's actively doing something in the universe? Hello? When God in Genesis created the world, what were the words? God said. God said. God said. God said. God said. God said. And it was what? It was so. We're created in God's image and in God's likeness. The Bible tells us that our tongue will either give life or bring death. That's up to you. The problem is, is we speak so many negative things in the course of a day, in the course of a month, in the course of a year, that our lives are contrary to what the Word of God says our lives can be. Does that make sense? The problem is, is we're, as humans, we're very visual. We tend to believe what we see, right? Does that, does that make sense? If you're going through a trying circumstance or just a lot of stress, what do you talk about? The stress. The stress. The stress. Amen, sister. Come on. You talk about the stress. Yes. Oh, this is never going to change. Oh, I'm having financial issues. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, God, for this. And this is happening. And I don't feel well. And I don't know. And I don't know. And I don't know. <laughs> and what does God say? You'll get what you speak. You reap what you sow. Because what comes out of my mouth determines where my faith is. Amen? Man, did God slam me with that one yesterday. He says, you speak and you teach, but yet you don't live it out. He says, watch your mouth. Nothing is going to change. And I know this is of God because my sermon is totally contrary to what I'm teaching you now. Yeah. I wanted to preach on Nehemiah. God says, I got something different for you. Yeah. We've got to be careful because the enemy creates situations and circumstances so that we can see. Now what we see goes contrary to what the Word of God says. <laughs> But the enemy knows that if I can get them to speak out what they see, they'll get more of what they don't want. Wow. They'll be in more bondage. They'll be tied up. And they'll keep speaking the negative, And the negative will keep swirling around them yeah. until they're so bound up that they cannot move. Where you are right now in your life is a culmination of the words that you've spoken. How long you are in a situation is based on the words that you have spoken. This is never going to change. Is that faith? It is. It's the wrong way. Everything changes because God says it does. Amen? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, comes out of my mouth. God, I don't know how I'm going to meet my bills. We may have to lose the house. We may have to do this. We may have to do this. We may have to do this. And then you get mad at God when the very thing that you prophesied came, comes to pass. Instead of saying, my God is well able, He is able to meet every one of my needs according to His riches and glory. He is the owner of the cattle on a thousand hills. He's the one that's going to see me through it. He's the one that's going to get me through the Red Sea experience. He is not a respecter of persons. What He did for you, He'll do for me. What He did for the Israelites way back when, He'll do for me today because I serve a God that doesn't change. But see where my faith is? We, we look at things the wrong way. Turn with me to Ezekiel. For those of you who don't know the Bible, that would be in the Old Testament. Just getting you there quicker. Ezekiel chapter 36. When you're there, say amen. I'm sorry, go to 37. 
37 rather. Right church, wrong pew. When you're there, say amen. amen. And it says, And the hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. So when you see the word valley in the Bible, that means death. A low place. A place of struggle. How many of you are in a valley today? Financial valley, emo don't raise your hand, emotional valley, relationship valley. You're just in a very low place. Guess what? You choose whether you stay there or not. Amen? Amen. Say it with me. I choose where I stay. In the valley or on the mountaintop. I don't know about you, but I don't like the valley. I don't like the view. I don't like the smell. I don't like any of it. Okay. And it says... And he said unto me, Son of man, do you see, can these bones live? This is God asking Ezekiel, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Meaning, God, why are you asking me? You know they can live. You know what was going on. But see, God doesn't, see, God knows what he knows. He wants to know what you believe. Yeah. Amen? So the Lord goes on and says, And again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Oh my God. What were the words there? He said, You prophesy, not me, you. Meaning us. We prophesy life or death into our life. It really just hit me yesterday. And, and, you know, and I've preached it before. And God says, If you can't speak life then don't speak at all. Because you are bringing the very thing that you don't want into existence. This is a new year coming. Wouldn't it be great to start speaking the right thing? Yes. Prophesy. If your marriage is in trouble, the first thing that you want to do is to run around and tell people that you're right. <laughs> it's her fault. It's his fault. No, it's your fault. Because you are prophesying death into that relationship. What does God say? Does he say to go around and tell everybody your problems? Or does the Bible say to stand on his promise? Stand on his promise. How long are you supposed to stand on his promise? Forever. Forever. Until it comes to pass. Right? Right. Why is it that we stand on his promise... And after a month, six months, a year, two years turns into three, three years turns into five, five years turns into ten, and you say, what is going on? What does the Lord say? Stand on my word. Stand on my promise. See, I think so many times the troubles that we have are because we keep prophesying the problem. We keep looking at the mountain. Didn't the Bible say, if you say, if you believe and say to that mountain, get over there and be cast into the sea, it should obey you? But listen, if you keep talking to the problem, the problem gets bigger. And God gets smaller. See, God can remove that mountain in a second. But he wants you to know that so can you. By the words that you speak. Does that make sense? Yeah. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Financially. We're never going to get out of debt. And year after year after year after year, you keep saying the same thing. And you look at your Visa card bill, and the Visa card bill doesn't go down. It goes up. Yeah, right? Yes, no, maybe so? Yes. I don't know about you, but my Visa card bill don't go down automatically. But what about supernatural intervention? God, he's cut it up. Yeah, throw it away. That would be the great first step. First New Year's resolution. Get rid of the stupid credit cards. <laughs> But we won't go there yet. That'll be another class. Amen? <laughs> we don't want to shake too many people up too fast. If we don't change what we say, we will never change what we do. Because what you say will be where your mind goes, which is then will be where your actions go. Hey, look, I'm going to be in debt anyway. I might as well charge that new furniture as well. I might as well do this. I might as well buy that new car. I might as well charge that gorgeous dress I want to see that I can't afford anyway. And you never get out of debt because your mouth is telling you that this is never going to change. How many of you want family members in the house of God? Yeah. People who are out there, not saved. Right. But what do you talk about? 
how difficult it is. Yeah, for you, not for him. Right. right. See, everything's, everything is about Jesus. Everything. It's not about you. He just wants you to get in line with what he's already said. Get in line with God's word. Prophesy that person or your loved ones into the kingdom of God. But pastor, what if it doesn't work? I get that a lot. Yeah. I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying. But what if it doesn't work? It does. You got your answer right there. He just said it. It's not going to work because you're telling me you don't believe it. Right. Well, pastor, I didn't say I didn't believe it. I just said, what if it doesn't work? <laughs> we just said in Hebrews, you can't please God but through what? Faith. 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 And if I have faith, then what comes out of my mouth has to be what? Faith-based, yes? Faith-based. If I, if I keep saying that's never going to change, then God says, so be it. So be it. Keep prophesying it. So be it. I can never lose weight. Hello? <laughs> Hello. Mm. That's why year in and year out, we're still fat. <laughs> because we get up and say, I can't get up early. Right, Mom? That's what I say, right? I ain't getting up early. I can't get up early. Sure you can't, because if the stupid cat woke you up, you'd be up. If the phone rang, you'd be up. If you had to meet somebody for a business deal, you'd be up. So don't tell me you can't be up at 5.30. Man, am I getting convicted of this. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen? But I'll never lose the weight. So what are you going to do? You have the chocolate cake. Because after all, you're not going to lose the weight anyway. <laughs> and then come December 31st, oh, here's a New Year's resolution. Yeah, here we go. You made that for the last 20 years and you're still fat, so stop making the resolution. Stop speaking the word. Lord, I can be healthy. I am made to be healthy. My body is healthy. I am going to be at my desired weight, Lord. I am going to get control over this food by the power and the blood of Christ. I am, I am, I am, I am. Not going to the gym and saying, God, I get up at 5.30. I hate working out. I hate having to get, oh, it's cold outside. I hate going to the gym when it's cold. You know, I hate the person that smells next to me. All death. Everything that you're prophesying now, is that going to move you forward? Or is that going to keep you stuck? It's going to keep you stuck. What about you saying, I'll never get that promotion. I'm not smart enough. Or... You know, Never say that. it's all in who you know. Well, I don't know about you, but I know somebody pretty powerful. More powerful than you. More powerful than the CEO of the company. I can make it. I can do these things. I can be prosperous. I can, I can, I can, I can, I will, I will. And you speak life into that situation. You speak power into that situation. Does this make sense? Yes. Yes. But yet, it's always the I can't syndrome. Well, you know, my boss doesn't like me. So what? Who cares if your boss doesn't like you? <laughs> God loves you. God has your steps ordered. God is for you. The Bible said, if God be for you, who can be against you? But you don't understand. There's 20 people ahead of me for this job. No, you don't understand that your words are keeping you bound where you're at. You can say, Lord, I need that position. I desire that position. If it be your will, if it holds me in line with your word, Father, I'm claiming that position. And you'll get it over time. But the problem is, a week goes by and somebody else gets that position. Um, See? Told you it wouldn't happen. Yep. I told you. No. It just means it's not yet. It's not a no. It's not in Todd's time yet. But keep believing for it. Keep prophesying it. Keep believing that God's going to bring it to you. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Abraham was promised that he would have a child, yes? Yes. Hmm. It says he believed God, yes? Yes. But when it took too long, his wife came out with a great idea. <laughs> the wife said, Abraham, listen. I'm old, you're old. This ain't going as quick as we thought it would go. We need to help God out here. Because obviously he doesn't really know what he's doing. So we're going to help him out. Don't we do that? Yeah. <laughs> Go sleep with my handmaiden. So Abraham said, yeah, cool with me. <laughs> when your wife tells you to go sleep with somebody else, you get her permission. Abraham was like, I can see him flying into that tent. Woof, going in. <laughs> Bam, he was in that tent. 
praise God, we're going to do God's will. I can sleep with someone else too. Do you think that was sin? Yes. You better believe it. Why? She wasn't his wife. She wasn't his wife, but why else? Lack of faith. God's will. He had faith to believe, but as time went on, it began to waver because sometimes God has you in a position where your, your desire is going to take steps to get there. And every step of the way, God is going to meet you. But Abraham and Sarah short-circuited God's plan. He had a son, Ishmael. And then Sarah gets mad that the handmaid got him a son. Then she says, get her out of here. But God made him a great nation as well. But you see the words that were prophesied? It's almost like saying your actions are words spoken. How many understand that? Everything, everything that you do is words that you've already spoken. Because if they wouldn't have spoken that unbelief, they wouldn't have gone that direction. Right? Right. The words that you speak, does it cause you to go in a direction? Yeah. Where? The wrong way. The wrong way. If it goes contrary to the word of God, that's why God says, don't go look to the left or to the right. Amen? Yeah. Follow his lead. Follow what he's saying. Right? We're going to continue on here. I'm going to put my glasses on. <laughs> Amen. Okay. And it says, And say unto the Lord to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and ye shall live. This was a battlefield. There was nothing but dry, dusted bones there. He tells Ezekiel, You prophesy and tell these bones to live. Don't raise your hand on this, but if you're in a bad relationship with your husband or wife, guess what you can do? What? You can prophesy it back to life. Amen. Speak life to that. But I don't love her anymore. I don't love him anymore. Yeah, keep saying that. Because your words will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. There was an article that I read a long time ago. See, humans, we try to justify. It was a marriage counselor, a Christian marriage counselor, and the husband said, I just don't love my wife anymore. What do you suggest I do? And the Christian counselor was very smart and said, Love her. The guy said, I don't think you just heard me. I don't love my wife anymore. What do you suggest that I do? Came back, he said, I told you. Love her. What he was speaking was life. What he was speaking to this man is, love is not a feeling anymore, love is an action. But if I keep saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, even though I don't mean it right now, or maybe I think I've fallen out of love with you, but if I keep saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, do you think that maybe... Something may rekindle in, in, my, in my head? Yes. In my heart and the way that I handle certain things? Yes. What about your job? I was a great one for this. I hate my job. I hate my job. I hate my job. You're going to work that way? I hate my job. But in the same tone, you thank God for it. Amen. Isn't that weird? God, I hate this job, but thank you that I have it. But you're telling you're complaining to God that you hate the job. And you want to change. But God says, I'm, you're not going to get anywhere until you start thanking me for the job and believe in what you say. I'm not stuck. You know, how, how, I hear this all the time. Well, I'm stuck. You're not stuck. You choose to be stuck. Because that was my excuse. Well, I'm stuck. I'm 50 years old. I don't have a college degree. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't. You, can, you can claim all that if you want. And you can be stuck all that you want. But I would prefer to say, my God is bigger. My God is well able. I'm going to pray and see God's direction on this. And sometimes God had to take, God took me, man, I'll tell you, he, whew. <laughs> he took me around. I mean, I went to, how many jobs have you been through the last? <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, amen. But God, but see, but I, I knew. I said, God, you got something. You've got something better for me. Yes, yes. I said, I don't like where I am, but I know, man, you've got, some, you've got something better for me. Hurry up! <laughs> oh yeah, I said, I've got to hurry up. This is getting crazy. You've got something better for me. But it started to change when I really started to believe it. That I know I don't. I, I, God, I should be making more than this. I know more than this. 
I believe you for more than this. And then it started to click. To eight, till like about eight weeks ago, I started my, other, my new job and it doubled my salary. Amen. And I don't say it to impress you, I say it because it changed in a day. Yeah. Right. It was like, boom, you got the job. Boom, you got that. Went for the interview and didn't really care how it went either way. I just said, Lord, I can do this job and I know you're going to bless me. And I got the job. And it's been a blessing. It's been, I, I actually said to my wife, I said, this is the first job I actually ever loved. Besides pastoring. But again, my mindset had to change. I had to speak the right word out. Good disobedient kids? <laughs> yeah, come on, raise your hands. Yes, you do. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Keep talking about the disobedience. Keep talking about the problem. Keep talking about how they're never going to change. Keep talking about how you talk and talk and talk and nothing happens. How they don't listen to you. You go vomit that out in people. You go vomit that out in, 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 in God's plan. You go vomit that out. And God says, no. I've given him an expected end. He will fulfill the role I've called him to fill. You've got to prophesy that into existence. Amen. Every day you've got to get up and see your kids the way that God sees them. Not what they do. Not how they talk. Not how they are. But as how God sees them. Now, the funny thing is, is <laughs> sometimes I try and I'm like, say, Lord, I feel like the biggest hypocrite. Sometimes I look at my son and I'll say, yeah, God, he, he, he's a man of God. And I'm like, I can barely get that out. Because again, I'm, I'm going by what I see. But God has something much bigger for him. God has something much bigger for your runaway child. God has something much bigger for your kids than where you're prophesying. See, we see their mistakes. We see their shortcomings. We see what they do. We don't really see who they are. Who does God see them as? And when you prophesy to the dry bones, yes, he's going to be the preacher he was created to be. Yes, he's going to be drug free. Yes, he's going to do this. Yes, he's going to do that. Yes, he's going to be this. Yes, he's going to be that. By the power of the Most High God, because my God is bigger. That's right. But when we go home and we look at that person, the first thing the enemy is going to let you to see is going to be the circumstance. They lie. They cheat. They stole from you. They did this. They did that. They did this. They did that. And then you get depressed because you're thinking wrong because you're not stopping the thoughts coming into your head. And then you start agreeing with what the enemy says about the person that you love and you wonder why they don't change. Does that make sense? Yes. It's so simple. See, God said to me yesterday, he says, you can either live a life that you have now with the negative tongue that you have about certain things, or you can make it a point to every single day, thank me for where your son is going. Thank me where your job is going. Thank me for the health that you have. Thank me for this. Thank me for that. Thank me for this. Keep your mind set on me and not on what's happening to you. Does that make sense? Yes. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Let me ask you a question. In the church, do you think we need to watch our mouth? Yes. yes. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, you're so cute. Yes, definitely. And that's very, very true. Because how can we say that we love God when we curse our brother or sister? you love Jesus? Yes, I love the Lord. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, you know that, Frank? He's kind of a jerk. <laughs> you know, sister so-and-so, did you see what she was wearing today? <laughs> Pastor didn't even say hello to me today. Hello, everyone, just in case you know I miss anyone. <laughs> so I keep myself covered on that. You know, good morning, God bless, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all of it. <laughs> in the church, we should know better. I'm a pastor. I still don't get it. Because my mind still goes off to the, the enemy. The, you, listen to me. The revelation came so strong. The enemy is full of distraction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It takes one second for you not to realize where that thought is coming from right. before your mouth engages. It's bam, that mouth goes off. This kid, I can't believe it. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And it's like, it, it, sometimes I, it's like the Holy Spirit should be there with a, a two by four and crack me right over the head when the mouth starts going. <laughs> 
But he allows you to say it because then he'll come and say, what did I just tell you? And you go, oh. But now, he, he, get this. Can words be retracted? No. 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 So once they're out there, they're out there. Once you tell someone they're not lousy, no good, whatever, the word's out. Can't get it back. Can't get it back. You can apologize, but it's already, the, the damage is already done. The Bible says a, a soft what? Word turns away wrath. So in the church, brothers and sisters, shouldn't we, shouldn't we have more grace for our brothers and sisters? Is anyone perfect in here? Because I really have to know. Is anyone in here perfect? No. Okay, so we're all in agreement that we're not perfect, right? Right, right. Okay, I have to get that, Pastor Mike, because I think some people think they are perfect. Amen? <laughs> Just so that we're clear, I want to make sure we're on the same playing field. So when people make a mistake and they offend you, and listen to me, listen to me, I didn't make up the rules. Right. Write it down if you have to, but write these words down. I will get offended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Let me ask you a question. As pastors, do you think we get offended? Of course. If I get offended by people who think that to me and I start throwing people out of the church? <laughs> Pastor, where's so-and-so? Throw them out. <laughs> Why? Got offended. <laughs> Didn't like my shoes. <laughs> Pastor Mike preached too long. <laughs> Pastor Mike was talking about this. I, I didn't disagree with that. Pastor Mike said, get out. <laughs> we wouldn't have a church left. <laughs> but we speak the right thing when the offense comes. Yes. Lord, we understand. They're not there yet. Right. And we check our own. Maybe we said something too harsh in and, and we check it. But our, our words are always positive. It's never negative. It's never ever negative. But listen, we, we get offended. You're going to get offended. Now what's going to come out of your mouth? Love? Compassion? No. Grace? Yeah. I'm hoping it will. Oh, no. <laughs> no! No! Ah! <laughs> Italians are great at holding grudges. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, I'm going to forgive you, <laughs> but I ain't going to let you forget it. <laughs> Remember back in 2000 yeah. when you said this to me? Dude, it's 2025. Get over it. <laughs> Church is the same way. Because the words that you speak, you always rehearse the offense. I hear it all the time. Well, sister so-and-so offend me. Brother so-and-so offend me. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Stop talking about it. Put it under the blood. Go to that person. Get it clean. Put it under the blood. And speak life. I forgive. I love. Show grace. Grace was shown unto me by Jesus Christ. How can I not show forgiveness and grace to someone else? But we want to rehearse it. And you know what's worse? We then want to share the vomit with other people. <laughs> Yes. Ever, yeah, any, everybody had kids that threw up on them? Yeah. Yeah. Is that a pleasant experience? No. Uh. When you allow people to speak negatively to you about someone else in the body, or family, or your workplace, what you're allowing them to do is vomit on you. Now, vomit stinks, and it can make you sick. So if you allow people to constantly vomit on you, guess what happens? You become sick. Yeah. You stink. Stop it. No. Speak life. You know what? Let's talk about this. What's bothering you about this person? Let's rehearse that. Let's, let's speak life. What's the good qualities in that individual? It's hard to find good qualities when you're mad at someone, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Or if somebody hurts you, to sit down and say, there are good qualities here. Lord, I can't see them, but I know they're here somewhere. <laughs> but you have to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to speak to you about that, right? And speak life-affirming words to that person. Does that make sense? Why can't we do that? We're forgiven much, yes? yes. We're, we're, we're all going to heaven, I believe, I hope, here. Right? Do we deserve it? No. But, but through confession of our mouth, 
we've gained heavenly kingdomship. Does that make sense? By conversion of the heart, we've attained this. So Isaiah preached a good word. What was it? Four, four weeks ago? Mm-hmm. On a Wednesday night about dreams. That your dreams or sometimes your desires, they, they, they die or they become, you wait for them for so long that they kind of die and they become dormant. That's your fault. It's not God's fault because God's promises are yea and amen. The problem is we've been, in, we've been in ministry now for 10 years here in this church. 10 years already. But listen, we haven't broken 100 people yet. That's odd, isn't it? And I say to God all the time, when are you going to break open the doors? And he says, it's not for you to know when. It's for you to keep going and doing what I've called you to do. Now, but I keep telling people, our church is going to be a church of 700. The church is going to be a church of 700. Ten years, we haven't broken 100 people. But I'm still believing and still prophesying and and proclaiming that we're going to be a church of 700. It's not up to me when it comes. But if I don't prophesy it, I'll never see it. If I don't come in line with what division God put in my heart, it'll never come to pass. My question to you is, and I'm going to close with this, how many of you have dreams that God has birthed in you 20 years ago, 15 years ago, that have taken so long to come to fruition that you probably said, eh, probably wasn't meant to be. When a husband and wife get together, to have a child. The woman gets impregnated with the child, yes? God gives you a dream. He impregnates your spirit with a dream, with a desire. Pregnancy for humans is nine months. Do you remember, is it 19 months for an elephant? Ah, Something like that, right? Now the reason why I say that is, for a human it's nine months. For the elephant, it's 19 months. But no matter how long the time comes, there will will be a birthing of that impregnation. Hello? Hello. When God gives you a dream, like God spoke, I I was up there on the balcony, and God says, believe for 700, and I looked at this place and I said, where? (laughs) I'm looking with with, with my physical eye. Where am I going to put 700 people in here? He said, I didn't say it was going to be here. Just believe for 700. Right. That was five years ago. And we haven't broken 100. And don't think the enemy doesn't come to me and say, when is this going to happen? And I'll get into a conversation and say, I don't know. (laughs) And God says, yeah. I said, I believe my God. If he says it's going to happen, my job is to believe it. My job is to proclaim it. My job is to prophesy it until I see it happen. Where are you going to put 700 people? I don't know, but God has a plan. I'm just to walk it out. What's your dream that God put in your heart to do? We want to grow the church. What are you going to do to grow it? What are you going to do to revive your own dreams in your own life? What are you going to do to move yourself forward? Keep talking the same junk you've been talking for the last year and a half, two years, three years, four years, ten years? I can't do it. Do you know what I hear a lot? In, in, in churches, like especially here, where I talk to people about ministry, I'm too old. No way. I'm too old. No way. And my question back is, are you dead? Yes. Because until you die, I want you to keep working. Keep pushing. Because, let me tell you something. You keep saying how old you are, and God will honor that. Well, you know, I don't walk as fast as I used to. I don't bend as quick as I used to. I, I, I don't do anything as fast as I used to. Well, gee, maybe you should stop saying that and saying I'm young at heart. My mind is young. My mind is saved on the Lord. I'm powerful. I'm healthy. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm healed. Whatever you're looking for. I love this one, too. I'm not smart enough. I'm not Einstein. I can tell you that right now. I don't have a theological degree. I didn't go to Bible college. I went with what God birthed in my heart. Back when I was 23. Now check this out. 23, I was dating my wife and I said, hey. No, we weren't. 
Oh, at 22, I'm sorry. We were dating at the time. She brought me into church. Hey, look. I'm going to smooth this over real quick. She's always right. She's always right. She is. When it comes to the day, she's always right. Amen? Happy wife is a happy life. That's what Pastor Bush used to say. That radiates with me, man. There's truth in that. But when we first started dating, I went to a charismatic church. The day I walked into Community Chapel, I said, this is where I belong. 18? Wow, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I said, this is where I belong. And then the Lord began to deal with me, and he said, I want you to, to do what he does. I want you to be a pastor. No, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I ran for 20-some-odd years. And my father-in-law once said, I didn't think this was ever going to come to pass. I had, I had prophetic words over my life. People would prophesy over my life that this is what was going to happen. And I go back to the prophetic word that was spoken. I'm like, man, we're right in it right now, but that took 20-some ideas to get there. You can't give up. You've got to keep prophesying, keep speaking, keep making the declaration of what God has promised you. See, God has promised each of you something that only maybe you know, maybe you haven't shared it with anybody. But sometimes it, it takes so long to come to fruition that we sometimes don't believe God's word anymore. And we abdicate it and say, it, it, uh, uh, it's too much past the time. Pastor Mike said, he can, whatever the locust state, God will give you back. God can redeem the time for yes. you. Amen. So what are you afraid of? If the dream is dead right now, Ezekiel told Ezekiel, prophesy to those dry bones. Yes. Live in Jesus' name. You want to be, in, be in, in ministry? Be in ministry. Prophesy it. Make a declaration. Speak life, not death. Speak life, not death to your kids. Do you know what I mean? Prophesy that they're going to be in ministry. Prophesy that they're going to be great men and women of God. Even when they stray and seem like they're doing something totally contrary to what you want them to do. Don't say, yeah, well, you know, my son is this now, and, you know, and then my daughter's here, they're never going to come back to church. But no! Don't say that! Say in the name of Jesus, they're coming back. They're on their way back. The Spirit is leading them back. They're going to be. It doesn't, Lord, it doesn't have to even be here. It just has to be in the church that preaches your word. Yeah. Get them where you want them to be in the name of Jesus. Amen? And prophesy that. Declare that word instead of declaring the negative. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in 2016, what are you going to do? Speak life. Speak life. Speak life. Watch Speak your mouth. mouth. And I want to challenge you. And man, am I putting myself on the spot here. <laughs> That's right. Tell your significant other that when you speak death, to remind you. Even it has to be, oh, don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. Because she, she's good at that. She'll catch it. I could, you know, sometimes just the way I phrase something, she'll say, there you go again. There you go again. And you might think, gee, you're a pastor. It's like, yeah, I'm human. <laughs> sometimes my mind goes in different directions, and sometimes I don't think of the right things I should be thinking of either. But have somebody come up to you and say, you're speaking death. You're speaking death. Let's agree to speak life. Let's speak life into the situation. And you're going to get this. Well, <laughs> that's not realistic. <laughs> How many know that we don't serve a realistic God? God doesn't make any sense. Because I serve a God that can separate the Red Sea. That doesn't make sense to me. But I believe that he did it. God can raise the dead. doesn't make sense to me, but I know he can do it. Isn't it easy? I know I said I was going to close. We are going to close, but this is really kind of cool. It's so easy for us to believe that God's going to raise you from the dead, isn't it? We all believe that, right? Yes. But we don't believe God for the small things. You know, people say to me, I think it's stupid that you're believing for BMW. I don't care. I don't care what you think. I don't care because when I get it, you ain't riding in it. <laughs> and when you say why, I say you were in disbelief. <laughs> I want the believers in my car. Amen? Amen. Don't hang around people that don't believe like you do. Right. Don't put, hang around people that are going to crush your dream. Are going to crush your word. And for God's sake, please don't get in line with it. Right. Well, you know, maybe you're right. No, if it goes contrary to the word of God, you're not right. You're wrong. Right. Let's all stand.
Let 2016 be a year of change for us. Forget the New Year's resolutions because they don't stick. Make a determination. Next week we're going to be talking about, if God allows, focus, determination, and action for the new year. Amen? The only thing that's going to change your new year is prayer and speaking God's word. Not your word. And watch your mouth. Remember your mother used to say, I'll wash your mouth out with soap. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll wash your mouth out with soap. If you see someone speaking death in your workplace, challenge them to speak life. Get around people and say, if I say anything negative, I want you to bring that up to me. Because I don't want to be... See, in, in, with my new job, no one is allowed to speak negative. That's good. I, 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 no. If you've got a problem, let's, well, let's, let's, it's not a problem, it's a challenge. The way you word things will be how they get resolved. Amen. You know, you got a problem with someone, we, we'll, we'll talk it out. But it's the words that we speak that are important. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. Father, we just pray, Lord, that the word that went out today, Father, not only impacts us, Lord, but changes us, Lord, from the inside out. Father, it's, it's so imperative that we don't play church. Father, we have to become the church. We have to become what you want us to become. And Father, we, we have to make the changes. Father, you've given us your word. You've given us the Holy Spirit. You've given us every tool available to cause our lives to be prosperous, to, to be abundant. But Father, it's the words that we speak that will take us down a wrong path. And Father, sometimes it can be a very detrimental one. Relationships can be broken because of what we say. Lives can be broken. Relationships, everything look, can just get broken by harsh words. Father, our lives can take a drastic change for the worse if we keep saying negative things. Father, help us to bring life to our own lives, O oh God, by the words that we speak. Holy Spirit, give us guards over our mouth. Lord, just a, a, a control to say, if we're going to speak something, give us that one second of conviction to not say a negative word, but to come out and say a positive word, a life-affirming word, a life-giving word. Father, let 2016, Lord, be, be a, a, a thing of change. And you know what? Just as we close, Pastor Mike has said something in the meeting too this, this, today. We need to stop confessing what's going, out, what's going wrong with the world. You know, ISIS is out there. We, we know this. But is God bigger than ISIS? Yes. Yes. Instead of praying, instead of talking about the problem, let's pray that God deals with that. Yes. Right. Through prayer and through fasting and however God wants us to deal with it. Our presidential election. Listen, we don't know who the man or the woman is going to be. Amen? Amen. But let's believe that God's going to put the person in the office that he wants to be there. Yes. Let's proclaim life in that, that area as well. Amen? Let's start turning off the news and let's tune into the Holy Spirit yes. and speak life. Father, we just thank you for this day. Father, I ask for traveling mercies as we leave. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you cause this congregation to be the head and not the tail, cause them to be above and not beneath. Father, I just pray, Lord, that they empty their pockets as we go downstairs, Lord, for the teens' bank sale, Lord. Lord. Let the spirit of generosity hit each and every person and leave the chocolate for me. In Jesus' name, amen.